Hello, my name is Mohammed Abbas Khan, and today me and my team will be presenting on Cisco systems and the implementation of ERP in the company. Cisco systems, commonly known as Cisco, is an American-based multinational digital communications technology corporation that is now headquartered in San Jose, California and are manufacturing their primary product that is the main mainly the router two computer scientists from stanford university founded the company in 1984 and by 1997 cisco a small establishment became a fortune 500 company in the following year cisco's market capitalization went over 100 billion dollars and only two other companies, Intel and Microsoft, had matched the accomplishment. With the gigantic growth experienced, Cisco needed to look into their future regarding their existing enterprise resource planning package that is known as the ERP. Unreliability and common outages brought into question the validity of trying to enlarge the current system to meet this meet Cisco's constantly growing needs. Initially, Pete Solvik, the CIO of the company, was inclined towards avoiding an ERP solution due to the project being large enough to get out of control and largely over budget. The management decided to give each functional business unit to make its own decisions regarding the future of the IT systems. However, the department heads were aware of plan aiding. The running systems were not going to be sufficient in coordination with the company's rapid, rapid growth. Eventually in 1994, a dramatic system failure had terminated all business activities of the company for two days. And it was not possible to ignore the problem as it had corrupted Cisco's central database. Within a month, Cisco managed to form a team to make some research and investigation to replace the application. Solvik came up with a plan in arrangement with other management authorities to replace all existing and faulty applications in a single ERP project that function an ERP project that functions as a common data architecture throughout each business unit. I will now pass it on to my team to discuss the key issues, preventative measures and actions and proactive actions and their impacts. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Nana Jenfi, and today I'm going to spend some time and discuss about some of the key issues that led to Cisco finally deciding to implement the ERP system, which is also the enterprise resource planning system for their organization. Looking at the first issue, um, Pretty much um, for Cisco um, organization, right, to process all their core transactions, um, they ran on the Unix software um, pa software package that pretty much um, supported some of their functional areas that included um, finance, manufacturing, and order entry system. Um, traditionally, they employed a reactive approach um, to development of any new kind of um, IT advances, upgrading, or repairing the system only after problems. So pretty much until there is an issue, um, that's the only time Cisco at that time where um, I'm upgrading or repairing their system. And this worked out for them as they saw 80% of growth per year, right? And um, pretty much Peter Solvik, who was the CIO um, at that time, gave power, empowered um, each individual department to make improvement whenever they seemed fit. So they ran this um, strategy or this um, um, they ran the strategy for a couple of years until late 1993, where they came to the realization that the continuous modifications to the system were insufficient, right, and called for an overhaul of the system. But like also, 
um, back in um, January 1994, right? Um, the company, um, the whole company experienced um, two days of shutdown where finally um, they realized that um, the legacy system, um, the legacy environment wasn't enough and having to upgrade and apply batches and do the maintenance every time there's an issue wasn't enough to um, sustain their success and the growth, which is 80% that year. So because of the failure within the, um, the failure of their legacy environment, they finally decided to, um, they finally decided to upgrade um, or implement that ERP system for their organization. And this was one of the main issues that led to the implementation of the ERP system. Let's take a look at the second issue, which is um, the cutover to Oracle Right, um, for um, which um, they cut over to Oracle hardware architecture and size an issue. So pretty much after the after Cisco decided to implement ARP, um, they spoke to multiple vendors. Um, each vendor had to do some sort of presentation, right, to demonstrate why their um why their tool will be better fit for Cisco One in terms of implementing the ARP. Um, overall, um, Oracle. Um, was the chosen um, vendor, but after cutting over to Oracle, there were some a few issues in the beginning. An initial cutover wasn't um, as suspected, right? Um, pretty much nearly once a day on average, and the system went down. And after further troubleshooting, they realized that um, additional um, purchase of hardware was required to um, remediate the issues of the hardware performance, right? And some uh, one of the um, Consequences of this issue also led to um, um, business performance um, 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 going down, right? As, to, as you, multiple users attempted to do use the system, but luckily um, there was an unusual contract, and this was actually great on Cisco part. Um, within the contract that they had with um, with Oracle, um, pretty much they purchased equipment based on promise capability rather than specific um, configuration. And because of that, um, the responsibility fell on, and the responsibility fell on Oracle to fix any hardware performance problems that may arise because of the, um, because of the um, performance issues that they were seeing in the early stages. But needless, um, pretty much, um, the cutover to Oracle wasn't as smooth as they, um, they, they envisioned. Right, and one of the main issue was the hardware architecture and size and issue. Thank you, and I will head. Um, I'll I'll um I'll let Venla speak about the next um issues that was seen throughout the case study. Thank you. At the beginning stages of the project, it had no scope at all. This caused some problems with setting a target date, but this was eventually figured out. Later on, the project did also suffer from scope creep, though. By the time of the third phase, the conference room phase 2, many modifications had to be made to the scope as features such as new sales support package were implemented. Downstream impacts also exceeded the scope which meant that some significant structural changes had to be made. Systems had to be moved from a point-to-point -point communication model, where systems communicated directly with one another, to a data warehouse method, where all systems would have access to one information source at all times. These major changes meant that large resource shifts took place particularly with the IT personnel who had some serious trouble adapting some of these completely new structural shifts. Other unexpected modifications also had to be made. For instance, the Oracle package couldn't properly manage the after-sales support needs of the company. This meant that a service support package had to be figured out. There were also issues with work orders that required the development of an automation process to make 
everything run smoothly and uh, at the end all these problems combined took a team of 30 people three months of concentrated effort to solve i will now talk about preventative actions that the company could have taken to make the project more of a success preventative action one phased implementation Phase implementation is when a project is broken up into parts that consist of phases, such as design, build, test, and deploy. Design is the planning portion of the project. Build is when the project is constructed. Test is when the project is tested. And deploy is when the project is complete and sent out. The problem with the company's method was that the project was done in all in one phase. This meant that there was no time to review or go over the problems of the project. A phase implementation would have helped the project be divided into sections that would be easily manageable and many problems of the project could be discovered and solved during the phases. Preventative Action 2. Increased Time Constraint Project was estimated to take 15 months to complete by the team. The team was only given 8 months to complete the project, which is 7 months less than what they hoped for. An increase in time would help the team and the project. The time would help the project be more fleshed out with a better design and less problems when completed. The team was under a large amount of stress due to the delivery date, cost of project, and the importance of the project as a whole. The project cost a large amount of money and the success was unpredictable, so the team was under a lot of stress because of this. Alrighty, next we have the next preventative actions, user testing. Following up from the live launch of Oracle, as you might already know, there are many issues that had arisen daily. One of the main issues was that the software could not handle big data volumes for transactions. Nearing the final stages of testing, Pete Solvik said, our mistake was that we did not test the system with a big enough database attached to it. The only uh, tested sequent sequentially rather than at the same time, and only use a partially loaded database for testing. But this is where implementing user testing comes in. With a $15 million project, you need to have $15 million plan. This was not the case. Having user testing phase and uh, beta test is key to having a smooth operation run for any development process. User testing contributes to agile development, allowing for efficient analyses and early problem detection. More importantly, it lowers the cost of the project in the long run, less bugs and less issues. As uh, the case is, fixing is always more costly than replacing. Moving on, having a cushion. The next preventative action would be to have a cushion. Why? Looking back on Cisco's plan of implementation, many issues weren't considered before came about very abruptly. So what happened? During CRP1, which was the acronym that stood for the conflict between pilots and developers with the on previous works, the implementation team came across user design flaws in the system. One user said, you know, the date used to be the first thing you type, and in Oracle, it's the fourth. Really, realizing that they needed to make changes, they too realized that it came with a cost as well. That being said, implementing a buffer to the budget will lessen any unexpected costs that will come about in the future leading to better leverage in the execution of the development of the project. So for proactive actions, which are actions that will help, or actions that can be taken ahead of time to target problems before they occur instead of targeting them after they occur, um, our first proactive action is staying consistent. So constantly keep refining their knowledge of Oracle and service packages. Um, and figuring out the best way to make this work for Cisco is an example of a proactive action uh, under consistency because um, since this information is constantly changing, 
uh, as long as these team members are constantly updating what they know about um, the software, um, then they won't have to learn a bunch of information all at once and they can slowly but constantly make sure that they're up to date and that way they'll know any problems before they arise or what a problem looks like, etc. Um, next, we have key project status as one of the top agenda items for weekly executive staff meetings and track stabilization and make sure that everything is as it should be. So that goes under similarly the previous point because um, team members can be updating each other at these team meetings um, that were mentioned and they can again note any problems or any things that are going wrong. Um, as you see in the next bullet point, the team members always documenting issues they notice while modeling and addressing them in these meetings. Um, documenting would be a perfect way to note information down so that it can be remembered and recalled later instead of just um, saying it verbally. So that's also very important. So for our second project of action, we have keeping up with proper testing. Um, so for example, testing the hardware and software systems frequently to see how effectively they can handle the processing load and transaction volumes required to support Cisco's expanding company. Um, so that was obviously a problem that Cisco had with their system. And um, if the company were to constantly test and um, make sure that it can handle the processing load, then they would not have had this problem to begin with. Um, and that's something that will help in the future is if they continue with this testing. Um, also, to be testing well before a problem arises is another important point because, um, of course, to be proactive that you must be doing things before they happen. Um, just to add, when testing, they should be making sure that the system is being tested with a sufficiently large database tied to it and be running individual processes at the same time. Um, so these were also problems that Cisco faced and that they can be proactive with in the future. Um, and that will help. Um, Cisco obviously kept ignoring their shortcomings until they couldn't anymore. So proactive actions are very important in this case because um, if they are to be proactive, they will not have such a huge problem as they did before and have to deal with the consequences of shutting down, for example, how they have to shut down their company for a few days. Um, so yeah. And next to our next presenter, um, handing it off to Bisrat Lulu. Hello everyone, my name is Bisrat Lulu. Today I am going to present proactive actions. The selection of ERP was the right choice at Cisco. The ERP would streamline operations and decrease inefficiency in communications between various business activities. Since the project has been participating a lot of people and institutions, this is important to efficiently implement the project. Furthermore, the project helps to eliminate the bottleneck of the old system and increase efficiencies. The company would no longer suffer from the cost associated with patching the existing systems, system outage, or the corruption of the database could be avoided. Because employees had highly participated in the whole process, there would be employee ter ownership at every level. This is a great asset for Cisco even after the project is completed. The ERP project was the top priority at Cisco and completed on time and budget. It's a great achievement to complete such a mega project on this condition. It's not only Cisco which was committed, but all participating parties too. Software vendors commitment from Oracle, the hardware vendor and KPMG led to an eventual stabilization of the software and improved performance. The new information system would fulfill the promise of supporting the rapid growth of Cisco. So that is why it was worth celebrating. Thank you for watching. Finally, as we conclude, we managed to discuss and define five important key issues, outlined four preventative actions, and explored four different proactive actions. The key issues discussed are failure of Cisco legacy environment, 
cut over to Oracle says problem that includes hardware, hardware architecture, sizing, and software capability to handle the transaction volume required in the Cisco environment. Then we discussed projects, project scope issues, and then at last but not the least, project gaps in the system. Coming to preventative actions, we discussed phased implementation, increased time constraint, user testing, and having a question. Lastly, if we explored proactive actions that consists of stay consistent, keeping up with the proper testing, efficiency and ownership, and then at last reasons for ERP, ERP to be the top priority. ERP project carried out by Cisco was a successful implementation in a short amount of time. The high risk factor was evaded with keeping a small budget compared to the large size of the project. The achievement and, and advancement of Cisco not only, only became possible by exceptional planning and comprehensive analysis of Solvik and his team, vendors and stakeholders. This is gonna be all. I hope you enjoyed our presentation. Thank you.